warts, caused by various types of human papillomavirus HPV, have been recognized as a distinct medical condition for thousands of years. Their exact historical origins or first discovery, however, are not precisely documented, largely because warts are a common, non-lethal condition that would have been observed and recognized even in ancient times. The earliest recorded descriptions of conditions resembling warts can be found in ancient Egyptian medical texts, dating back to around 1500 BC. These texts, while not necessarily using the modern terminology or understanding of warts, describe skin growths that are consistent with what we now know as warts. In ancient Greek and Roman medical literature, physicians like Hippocrates and others also described skin lesions resembling warts. Given their prevalence and distinctive appearance, it's likely that warts have been recognized and described in various forms throughout human history. However, the understanding of warts as a viral condition is a relatively recent development in medical science, occurring in the 20th century with the advancement of virology and microscopic technology. Before that, the exact cause of warts was unknown, and various theories and treatments were proposed based on the medical knowledge of the time. Warts are caused by various strains of the human papillomavirus, HPV, and the route of their infection is predominantly through direct contact. The primary mode of transmission is skin-to-skin -skin contact with an individual who has warts. This means that engaging in physical interactions, such as handshakes or touching the affected area, can facilitate the spread of the virus. In addition to direct human contact, warts can also be contracted by touching surfaces contaminated with HPV. The virus is capable of surviving outside the human body for a period, which means common objects like towels, floors, or gym equipment could potentially be sources of infection if they have been in contact with the virus. Auto-inoculation is another route of transmission, where the virus spreads from one part of the body to another. This often occurs when someone with warts scratches or touches them, and then touches another part of their body. Activities such as shaving can also spread the virus, especially if a wart is nicked and the virus is transferred to another area of skin. The virus often enters the body through small cuts, scratches, or microabrasions in the skin. This is why warts are commonly seen in areas of the skin that are prone to injury or friction. Moist environments, like swimming pools and communal showers, can be hotspots for the transmission of HPV, as these conditions can soften the skin and make it more susceptible to infection. People with weakened immune systems are more likely to develop warts after exposure to HPV. This can be due to various factors, including certain illnesses, medications, or other health conditions that compromise the body's natural defenses. It's also important to recognize that not everyone exposed to HPV will develop warts. The immune system plays a critical role in fighting off the virus, and its effectiveness can vary greatly among individuals. Some may be more naturally resistant to HPV, while others might be more prone to developing warts upon exposure. The specific strain of HPV also influences the likelihood of wart formation, as different strains are responsible for warts in different areas of the body. Warts, resulting from the human papillomavirus HPV, infection, manifest as distinctive skin growths with a variety of features. These growths typically have a small, grainy appearance and can feel rough to the touch. Warts often present with a rounded top and can be either slightly raised above the skin or lie flat against it. The texture of warts varies. Some are rough and grainy, while others are smooth. Their color might match the surrounding skin, or they can be slightly darker or lighter. In some warts, particularly common warts, tiny clotted blood vessels appear as black dots, colloquially referred to as wart seeds. Depending on their location, warts can cause discomfort or pain. This is especially true for plantar warts located on the soles of the feet, which can be painful when walking, and for warts on the fingers or other areas subjected to pressure or friction. Warts may also lead to changes in the texture or color of the surrounding skin. In some cases, Warts appear in clusters, known as mosaic warts, which are commonly found on the feet or hands. Different types of HPV cause different kinds of warts, each with unique characteristics. Common warts usually appear on the hands and are rough in texture. Plantar warts, found on the soles of the feet, are often flat and can be painful. Flat warts, smaller and smoother, 
typically grow on the face, thighs, or arms. Filiform warts, which grow rapidly and are shaped like tiny brushes or fingers, often appear around the mouth, nose, or neck. Periungual warts develop under and around the toenails and fingernails, potentially affecting nail growth. It's important to consult a healthcare provider for a proper diagnosis and treatment if you suspect you have a wart, particularly if it's painful, changes in appearance, or if you have a compromised immune system. Treating warts, which are caused by various strains of the human papillomavirus, HPV, can be approached through a range of methods, tailored to the type, size, and location of the warts, as well as the individual's overall health. One common over-the-counter treatment involves the use of salicylic acid, a topical application that gradually peels away the infected skin. This treatment is more effective when the wart area is soaked in warm water, and any loose skin is removed before applying the acid. However, it requires patience, as it can take several weeks to months to see results. Cryotherapy is a procedure that involves freezing the wart with liquid nitrogen. Performed by a healthcare provider, it causes a blister to form around the wart, leading to the dead tissue sloughing off within about a week. This method might require multiple treatments for complete removal of the wart. For persistent warts, surgical removal might be recommended. This can be done through cutting out the wart or using electrosurgery, which burns it off using an electric needle. Laser treatment is another option for resistant warts, where laser therapy is used to burn and destroy the wart tissue. Chemical treatments involve the application of substances like cantharidin, which causes a blister to form under the wart. The dead tissue is then clipped away after a week or so. This treatment is typically administered by a healthcare provider. Immunotherapy is a method that aims to stimulate the immune system to fight against the wart. This might include the application of substances that encourage the body's immune response to target the wart. Some individuals opt for home remedies or over-the-counter solutions, such as using duct tape to cover the wart although the effectiveness of such methods can vary and may not be scientifically proven. It's also important to avoid irritating the wart, as picking or scratching can spread the virus to other parts of the body. Preventive measures include avoiding direct contact with warts, keeping feet dry to prevent plantar warts, and not sharing personal items like towels. Before starting any treatment, especially for those with diabetes, a weakened immune system, or other medical conditions, Consulting with a healthcare provider is essential. Some warts may disappear on their own, but this can take a considerable amount of time. The chosen treatment approach should consider the individual's specific situation, including the wart's type and location, as well as the person's age and overall health.